Welcome to Block Party 2021. I'm Shishim Rotra, CEO and co-founder of Coda, and I'm so excited to kick off today's events. Some of you may remember the first Coda Block Party in 2018. We gathered our maker community together at a restaurant in downtown San Francisco, and we previewed the set of building blocks that we said would allow anyone to make a dock as powerful as an app. For many of those attendees, it was the first time they'd ever seen Coda, and we were still months away from them being able to use it. You know, a lot has changed in the last three years. We came out of beta, we shipped Coda 1.0 and 2.0, and made over 300 improvements and features, including nested pages, collapsible content, crosstalk, attachments, locking, team plans, and you finally got dark mode. The Coda community has grown exponentially too, with tens of thousands of teams now making docs all across the world. Now, I know a lot of you are excited to get to those juicy product updates, and I promise I have some really good stuff coming for you. But before we get to that, I'd like to talk about a word that's been front and center for me all year. And that word is rituals. The first time I remember hearing it in this context was from my friend Bing Gordon. Bing, if you don't know him, was the chief creative officer at EA and has been an investor of iconic companies like Zynga and Amazon. I have the pleasure of sitting on a board with Bing and in one meeting he rattled off an observation that really stuck with me. He said, every company has a small list of golden rituals. There are three criteria. Number one, they are named. Number two, every employee knows them by their first Friday. And number three, they are templated. He gave a few quick examples. Google has OKRs, Amazon has six pagers, Salesforce has V2 mom. And I immediately thought about Coda. What is our golden ritual? So I ran Bing's test. One Friday, I sought out the new hires who had just started that week, and I asked them what Coda's golden ritual was. The answer was universal. Every single one of them responded with Dory and Pulse. They'd only been employees for one week, and they reported they'd already seen 20 different instances of it. For people who maybe aren't as familiar, Dory is a way we ask questions without having to interrupt each other and raise hands, and people vote on which topics they want to cover. And Pulse is a way we collect everyone's viewpoint without having to go around the room. Dorian Pulse definitely meets Bing's test. It has a distinctive name. Every code employee knows it by their first Friday, and it's templated. In fact, you can use it too. So type slash Dory in a Coda doc, and you can access the same templates. Interestingly, as one of these new hires was telling me about Dorian Pulse, she mentioned that this wasn't memorable because it's a better way to run meetings. She told me that Dorian Pulse represents her favorite part of Coda's inclusive culture, how we strive to avoid groupthink and ensure great ideas can come from anywhere. So as I thought about kicking off this block party event and which theme I wanted to focus on, I found myself returning to this word, rituals. For me, the words become very sticky and it has driven a lot of how I personally have been rethinking the world around us. And for Coda, it's become an anchoring point for many of our initiatives. You might have seen releases like Reactions. We took common patterns for how people drove participation and we made it front and center in the product. We saw how powerful it was for rituals to be named and templated, so it made it easy for people to build their own custom templates. I realized that while product building blocks are important, I found that the gap for many teams in identifying rituals was actually just inspiration. So at the start of the year, I decided to spend my free time researching and learning about rituals of great teams. I set a goal to collect and catalog rituals from hundreds of different teams and leaders. I reached out to past colleagues and friends. They graciously offered their time to be interviewed and I asked them each Bing's question, what's your golden ritual? It's even turned into a fun dinner series where every other Wednesday, I asked a set of leaders to share their rituals in a group. Honestly, the reactions were heartwarming. People were very eager to share their rituals and I got to see firsthand that the best teams in the world Half their success is what they do, and the other half is how they do it. I have dozens of stories to share from the research. Let me just share one of the earliest and most impactful conversations. Here's Jenny Emick, a design lead at Square. One of my favorite rituals is how we transform one-on-ones within my team. For context, I did this because I heard feedback that people weren't having regular conversations around career development with their managers outside of review cycles. While people had standing one-on-ones with their managers, we lacked structure that prioritized career development conversations on a regular basis. If notes were captured during these one-on-ones, 
they were done so largely in forever scrolling Google Docs, where meaningful career development feedback became buried very quickly under other notes. We also kept separate development plans in spreadsheets, and so the feedback around career development delivered in one-on-ones was disconnected from those development plans. So I created a doc in Coda, essentially a toolkit for leads that focuses on professional development. Here are a few key parts that I wanna share with you about the doc. First off, every doc starts with a partnership agreement, and this is an opportunity for every manager and employee to write down their expectations for one another. Kind of sets the tone for the relationship. There's also a page for one-on-one notes and clear action items, so you have a follow-up after every one-on-one. Most importantly, there's a distinct page for career path discussions. This is where we define goals and a clear path on how to get there. I also integrated things that had historically lived all over the place, such as kudos and hype docs, how we keep track of the amazing things our employees do. In retrospect, the reason this doc was so broadly adopted is that it's a simple tweak to an existing ritual, one-on-ones with your lead. The reason I love Jenny's ritual in particular is because it's emblematic of how a lot of rituals start. Someone solves a problem for themselves or their team and they end up creating a ritual that reinforces the culture. Word got around about Jenny's doc and it spread like wildfire through Square and even beyond Square. The doc actually caught on in hundreds of companies, including Netflix and Spotify. We even modeled our own one-on-one template at Coda after hers. It's amazing to me how one maker's well-designed ritual positively impacted potentially thousands of manager-employee relationships at hundreds of different companies. So Jenny's story got me excited to scale my research a bit and find as many rituals as I could. I went out and interviewed over 120 people. I met entrepreneurs building everything from social apps to airplanes, uh, founders of tiny startups all the way up to CEOs of big companies like the New York Times and Nike. I heard about how Disney asks employees to spend a day in the park dressed up as a character, or how Stripe spins a wheel to decide who presents in their meetings. I've been compiling all these stories together into a book. The book's coming out later next year, and I've got an exciting announcement for you. As a thank you for coming today, I'll be sending all of you the advanced manuscript after the event. I'm hoping you jump into the doc and add your comments and thoughts and maybe even contribute some of your own rituals. And I'll send you each a printed copy when it's available next year. This word ritual has changed the way we as a company think about Coda and the world around us. And it's inspired many of our initiatives this past year. My hope is that after today, you'll think of Coda as not just a doc, but as a platform for all of your team's rituals. Throughout the day, we'll be hearing more stories of rituals transforming organizations from amazing leaders like Ariana Huffington, Annie Duke, Rahul Vora, Nick Mehta, and many more. All right, let's get on to what I know many of you are here for. Let's get on to those juicy product updates. So as we imagine stretching our platform to accommodate all those rituals we're seeing from makers, we realize we need to rethink the core of how Coda operates. So we embarked on a two-year project to rewrite the heart of Coda, the editor. Before I show you what we did, let me explain our view of the constraints. We went back and studied the history of editors. In our eyes, there have been two artificial divides that have been constructed. The first is the divide between authoring and publishing. For most of us, editors we're used to follow a pretty familiar blinking cursor pattern. Some of you might be picturing simple editors like Apple Notes or the Windows Notepad, while others might be picturing your traditional word processors. All these editors are focused on inviting authorship. It's a blinking cursor on a blank canvas full of opportunity. Other editors are focused on precise publishing. The general unit of structure is a block and they focus on the ability to style and place those blocks exactly where you want. So you can completely control the design of your website or your wiki. As we look through the history of editors, we found that every editor landed on one side or the other of this divide, either authoring or publishing. In the last two years, we've been working to engineer an editor that we think brings together the best of both worlds, enabling those beautiful presentations from a publishing-focused block-based editor without sacrificing the collaboration and open canvas of an authoring-focused flow-based editor. This unlocks the first building block in the new editor, Canvas Layouts. You may have noticed these little handles show up in the product about a year ago. 
Now you can use these to not only rearrange paragraphs to be on top of each other, you can drag them off to the side next to each other. You can also drag here to arrange the size of the different columns. I can drag over images. I can even drag over charts, tables, whatever you'd like. Now you can finally use Coda for publishing like a block-based editor. But there's a key question. How good is it as an authoring surface? Does it still support the expectations we all have for flow-based editors? For those of you that are pretty close students of editors, you probably already have in mind the tests you would run to verify this. But for the rest of us, let me run through a few of the typical tests we run for good authoring experiences in editors. First one is called the cursor test. So you place your cursor somewhere in your document and you hit up until you get to the top of the document. And then you hit down and see if you get back to the exact same spot. Another one is the collaboration test. You ask a friend to join your doc and you try to edit the same block or paragraph alongside your friend. Most block-based editors actually use the block as a collaboration boundary. So two of us can actually edit at the same time. But as you can see here, the new code editor still supports seamless co-editing. One final test is the selection test. Try to select half of one block and part of the next block. Most block-based editors force selection to be at the block level, which makes sense for their paradigm. But look, I can select just fine here. Oh, and this is fun. Someone is editing right in the middle of my selection, and you'll notice that my selection stays right in the right place. This simple idea opens up a really broad set of scenarios. You can make a resume as beautiful as a website formatted just the way you want. It actually works with any object in Coda, so you can build up your team dashboard, putting all your live data in one single place. I've been using the new editor for the past few weeks, and I'm really proud and excited about what the team accomplished here. It took a couple years of work, but it really feels like that perfect blend of authoring and publishing. Okay, now let's talk about the second artificial divide in document editors, and that's between structured and unstructured information. For decades, you were asked to choose. Do I create a doc or do I create a spreadsheet? And in Coda, we brought tables and text together. But we didn't really crack it entirely. There were still things you could do in a canvas, but not in a table, like add a dory. The new editor changes all of that. Now we can bring the flexibility of the canvas inside a table. The way this rolls out is as a new column type. You can see here that I'm now inside a row, but I get the full power of the same canvas editor. I've got images, I've got collapsible regions, and I can even drag things side by side, just like I was doing before. It's collaborative, multiple people can make edits at the same time. And the rest of my code of building blocks work here. So I can type slash Dory and capture my team's feedback. One obvious question, why a column type? To be honest, we had a lot of debate on this topic. The easiest way to do this would have been to create a canvas as an attachment to a row. But in order to truly connect structured and unstructured together, it needs to be able to connect to the rest of Coda's building blocks. Let me show you an example. We gave a few teams early access to this new building block, and here's what they dreamed up. This first one is from the team at Pinterest. Pinterest runs all their planning process in Coda. Their OKRs, their strategy write-ups, their specs. This central doc is used by over 1,000 people, and it's enormous. Here's what their page list looks like. And we work with their team to build an alternate version with Canvas column types. All the pages are now in a table. You can see here. Not only is this a lot tidier, it creates a single place to see everything about a team, all the structured and un unstructured information in one place. And as they add new teams, it standardizes their ritual, ensuring every team can operate the same way. Here's another one. This is from the team at Digit. We showed them the Canvas column types, and they had a question. They said, wait, if it's a column type, does that mean that the Coda formula language can get access to the data in the Canvas? Our answer was, yes, of course. It can work like any other building block. It connects to buttons, packs, and of course it connects to formulas. So here's what they came up with. This is their table of meeting notes, but with two special columns. One that extracts the summary of the meeting, 
and the other one that extracts the action items. Now you can watch as we update these meeting notes and the summaries and the action items are all automatically updated. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Rebuilding the core editor of Coda was a super hard decision. We realized that if we want to be that blinking cursor of choice for a billion people, we needed to invest in a best-in-class editor. It took a large portion of our team and the last two years to rebuild, and we're finally ready for you to try it. So keep an eye out for an early access invitation after the event, and if you want to dive deeper, there's a behind-the-block session after the keynote. I just want to say I'm really proud of what the team has developed here, and I hope you come to the same conclusion that this new editor truly allows you to bridge that divide between authoring and publishing and the divide between structured and unstructured information. But the new editor is not the only juicy product update we have today. Up until now, we've talked about Coda the Doc, but I'd like to talk a bit about Coda the Platform. Let me tell you about one of my favorite books. It's called Platform Revolution. It talks about how there are two types of companies, pipeline companies and platform companies. In pipeline companies, everything your customer gets is something the product team builds. But in platform companies, the experience of your users and customers is mostly driven by those users and customers themselves. Platforms like Android, eBay, and Airbnb rely on the community to fill in the product. From the beginning, we've thought about Coda as a platform where anyone can build docs as powerful as apps. We give makers a set of building blocks. They turn them into ingenious creations for all the people around them. And since then, we've been on a journey to make good on an even broader platform aspiration. Last year, for example, we took a big step forward with the launch of the Doc Gallery, allowing makers to share their creations with the world. Makers have now published thousands of docs, and the gallery gets millions of views. Are makers considered a key part of the Coda offering? Another type of platform aspiration is extensibility. Since the beginning, makers have pushed us to make it easy to extend and integrate with Coda. So when we launched our Breda product three years ago, we did what we viewed as the minimum bar for modern products, and we launched an API. This was aimed at developers, and it's mostly been used for integrations. With Coda 1.0 in 2019, we took a much bigger step forward and introduced a different type of extensibility with Coda Packs. The key idea here was to enable extensions that could modify the core building blocks of Coda. For example, you can take a building block like buttons, and with a pack, you can transform it into an action that sends text messages on demand. Or a pack can transform a table and turn it into a live data sync from Salesforce or Gmail. You can even extend Coda formulas. They can translate languages, compute statistics, and create nifty visualizations. Packs can extend Coda in a million different ways, but there's one big problem. Right now, Coda is the only one that can make them. We're about to change that. I'm excited to announce another big step in making Coda a platform in the truest sense. We're going to invite anyone to build packs and extend the core building blocks of Coda. We're introducing a new Pax Studio. You can build a pack in minutes in your browser, no download required, and minimal coding knowledge needed. Or if you prefer, there's a command line environment where you can write almost anything that TypeScript allows. You can build packs that are as simple or as complex as you like. You can come up with new formulas, sync tables, templates, slash commands, you can even integrate with different authentication systems. We've had this live for a dozen early partners for the past few weeks, and here's a little taste of what people have built so far. I built a HubSpot pack. I built a Yelp recommendations pack. I created the Plaid pack. I built the uh, public transportation pack. I built a Giphy pack that will return gifts directly from Coda. Squared away has a doc that keeps track of all their finances and the people that they need to pay. Because of the Gusto API and the Coda Pack, they'll be able to hit that single button and it will also go into Gusto and that pays all of their team members directly out of Coda, which is very exciting. This is the Giphy Pack. If you use Giphy in Slack, it always shuffles everything. 
And so if you see one that you like, but you're not really sold on it and you try to find something better, you can't really get back to the one that you really like, right? So when you search something in Giphy now, it will return about 50 results and you can actually parse through them by entering a number between zero and nine. And we're really excited we built out a pack for Coda that allows you to pull in highlights from your Zoom calls. I could see this feed, if you will, of all the kind of interesting noteworthy moments that are happening across all of our customer calls. So we started with the CRM because that was really the core data. Create things like pipeline dashboards in Coda. We can also have a list of hot leads. I use the Yelp API to build something fun. So if I'm looking for a sushi in Tokyo, I would just click suggest me and these suggestions will start popping up. What I wanted to do first was create a Mint tracker, but Mint runs on Plaid, so you can just create a Plaid API. So here's an account that I've set up already, and I can sync it with the table, and I'll get an information from Bank of America and load all those transactions within Coda. This is a demo of the YouTube Studio Pack, so I can sign in using my YouTube channel. Coda is going to pull in all of the channel statistics that we've specified for my channel. This time, instead of by day, we're gonna see the data by video. And we have the subscribers gained and lost, so we can try to figure out what about this video has been helpful in growing my channel. There are physical GPS on buses in San Francisco. You can sort of take all the stops and turn this sub table into a chart. There's Market Street there, and there's the shape of the coast. But the really interesting API here is the predictions API. You get a list of the next trains that are coming. With a little formula here, you can sort of count down until that arrival time. The bus arrived five seconds ago, and we can see that is in fact true. Thanks. This is a user interview session recorded over Zoom. And behind the scenes, Blossom automatically transcribed for the recording. Ideally, even combine them into some sort of like a highlight reel so we could just give you the couple of, of key moments that are very important instead of sharing the entire video. And we realized it's very natural for the user to be able to just highlight the text, uh, similar to how they do it in Blossom to indicate which parts are, are important. And I can just hit this one button. I can write a note about why it's important and make a brand new video automatically that just has these two parts stitched together. So we can hit that, I can hit play, and it will play, uh, it's a brand new video that plays directly in Coda. The highlight in general. The sky's the limit for like how much we can customize this. It looks simple, but being able to add columns and like basically change the whole schema is huge. We're throwing this like offer out there. It's almost like this calling to all researchers and product teams to like, hey, take what we built, which is gonna be this like template, build on top of it, rip it apart, take whatever you want, customize, build your own, you know, share as a community and take the best things and like, let's continue to evolve this. You can build whatever software you want. I love when companies do what you guys did. You give the power to the developers to control the integration themselves. They're like, oh yeah, is this the data that you wanted? And they wanted to share it. And they're like, yeah, this is exactly it. I was like, nice. And they're like, you know, I've been waiting for this for like six months. I was like, good, well, you know, six months and one week with Coda. Oh man, for me, that's so inspiring. So many of those packs are things I've personally wanted for years. And it's so exciting to see the community jump in and build them. Okay, I have three other things to note about our new platform for packs. Number one, you can deploy packs in multiple ways. Our expectation is that many people are gonna build packs to scratch their own itch first. Then some will build packs to solve a problem for their company, like connect to internal systems, for quick access to your team's rituals. And some makers will want to make packs to share with the world. Which brings me to my second point. There will be a marketplace. You will be able to publish packs into the gallery just like you can do with Docs Today. And to create a thriving marketplace, we decided to create an economy. We expect many packs to be made and published for free, but will also allow makers to capture value as well. That means for some of you, you can build a business making packs. For others, this means there's a greater chance that when you go to the Coda Gallery, you can find a solution to your problem. Number three, this is just the beginning. In the future, you'll be able to make packs that develop on top of every part of the Coda experience. You should picture things like new table styles, header images, even custom icons. Stay tuned for early access. 
Or if you want to know more, you should join the Behind the Building Block session later this afternoon after the keynote. As many of you know, before starting Coda, I ran YouTube products for Google. A lot of people ask me how I went from YouTube to Coda. They feel like very different markets to them, media and productivity. For me, actually, it's a very straight line between the two of them because they share the same fundamental observation. While I was at YouTube, my most commonly used analogy to describe the market was that online video would do to cable what cable did to broadcast. We'd go from three channels to 300 channels to three million channels. When I first started using that analogy in 2009, it would get laughed at. How could online video companies create with great cable channels like ESPN and Disney? But of course, if you fast forward 12 years, it's exactly what happened. Online video did to cable what cable did to broadcast. So why didn't people see that? I think most people made a critical mistake. They underestimated humans. YouTube invited makers from anywhere without qualification to apply their insights and showcase them to the world with video. And at Coda, we share the same belief in humans. And as I like to say at Coda, we believe that anyone can make a doc as powerful as an app. And my hope is that Coda will do to software what YouTube did to video. So with that in mind, I have one last announcement today. We believe we're at the start of this journey and a whole new set of makers is being formed. We of course are trying to do our part by making a set of building blocks for this next generation of makers, but we'd like to go a step further. So today I'd like to announce that we're forming a $1 million Coda Maker Fund. You can go to coda.io slash maker fund and take a look. If you have a great idea of something you'd like to make with Coda and need some support for idea, you can apply there. It might be new packs with our new pack studio or a new set of docs for the gallery where you can codify your rituals. Okay, to recap, we're launching a book, Rituals of Great Teams, over 100 practical techniques and templates to give you inspiration as you craft your own rituals. We're releasing a new editor, which will allow a more expressive canvas, both on the page and inside tables. We're opening up the pack ecosystem and inviting anyone to extend the core of Coda. And finally, we're announcing the creation of a $1 million maker fund. We've got a great day planned for you. On the main stage, we've got a wonderful lineup of speakers who will be sharing their rituals, starting with Ariana Huffington. Our product team will be hosting sessions so you can get the behind the scenes story of our new building blocks. And third, if you'd like to brainstorm how to codify your ritual, or get help on a new pack, or just want to chat with a team, stop by our makerspace. I'm so excited for all of us to meet, build, and learn together. Welcome to Block Party 2021.